Welcome to the McFarland Fire Rescue Fire Department. Come on in and we'll take a look around. So when you first come in our fire department, you start seeing a lot of the equipment that we have here. We're gonna take you through some of this equipment, show you around what we have and how we use it. And each piece sometimes has its special need or special use. And we'll talk about some of that as we go along. So, all right, so let's go ahead and take a look around. Right here, you're looking at our ambulance. We have two ambulances that are almost identical twins. So. Obviously, if somebody gets sick or injured and they need an ambulance to be transported to the hospital, at that point, we would then treat them, evaluate them, treat them, and then take them to the hospital where they can get further care. So this, like I said, is one of two ambulances. They're both in house right now, so we're good on that. So come on with me. Our primary ambulance is always called Rescue 84. Our backup ambulance is Rescue 82. That's kind of our EMS people. We have people here every day of the week uh, staying here at the station to take care of the ambulance to cover that if it's called. Right behind me is this big long truck. We call this the ladder truck. Obviously, it's got a very large ladder on it. That ladder is 100 feet up in the air that it'll reach, just a little over. We use it for a variety of things. Either we have to reach far there's actually a pipe up there we can push water through and we can put water on a fire from a long ways away for safety reasons. Then within the ladder truck, we have different compartments for different things. I'm just gonna open up this compartment here and just show you some of that. We have the lakes here in McFarland. We have two of them, Lake Wabisa and Lake Kaganza. We have water rescue and ice rescue gear in this truck. We have other trucks that also have the same gear. So a lot of these trucks have both the same type of equipment because we don't know which truck we might use sometimes for different things. So that way we've got all our equipment as well. So we've got ropes. We got a helmet that people can wear. We've got life preservers. We actually have a suit that we can put on that floats for helping with ice rescue, or even right now it's cold out with fall, the water temperature is cooler, that also protects us from the cold weather. So we have all that gear in here. This compartment has special belts. So if we're gonna crawl up that ladder, for our safety, we have to wear these special belts around our waist, so that way we do not risk falling from that ladder. Believe it or not, when you're 100 feet in the air, it can be a little, uh, little intimidating, a little nervous, a little scared. So the belts then help us with that, that we don't have to worry about falling off. This is a safety requirement that we have to have on in order to walk up that ladder. Take another compartment here in the ladder truck. This is a fan. So if we have a fire, we need to get the smoke out. This is a fan that we can run on an engine. We also have fans that run on electricity. So that's that fan. We also have blocks of wood. So if we have to do any type of rescue operations or like at a car crash where we need to stabilize equipment, that is a lot of times what we'll use for that type of uh, situation. So we're gonna walk around the ladder truck here. Obviously the steps are here to get up to the ladder. The other reason why it's called the ladder truck is we actually in this compartment have a lot of ladders. From big to small. They're stacked in here the whole length of the truck. So we have different reasons for that. And they're labeled as to how long they are. And each ladder has got its own specific function. 
So some of these are for inside the house, some of these are for outside the house. So as we round the corner here, we're gonna see a few other trucks. Obviously this is the rest, the other side of the ladder truck. This first truck here is actually a fire engine. So everybody hears about the fire engine. Well, this is one of, this is number one. And the one behind me is engine two. We move them around quite a bit, make sure that they get used equally, but they both have a significant amount of water on, thousand gallons of water on it. They have hoses on it, they have equipment on it. These are the ones that we're gonna use for extinguishing fire, a majority of the fire. The ladder truck can also do that, but these are the two engines that we're gonna do most of that work with. So we'll show you some things going on within the engine here. This back compartment of engine one is our extrication, big word. We talked about the ladder truck that had all the blocks for stabilizing a vehicle out at a crash. This one has even more. And we have extra quick extrication equipment to get people out of those circumstances. So if they're in a crash, we will use that to get the car peeled away so we can get these people out. But it isn't only car crashes. We can have people injured or trapped in situations that we might need to use this equipment as well. We have a lot of businesses around here that operate equipment that we might have to end up using some of that. I'll just leave that compartment door open so you can see some of the things with the end. Some of the things that we talk about the engine, what we call our tools. In the fire department world, we also call it our irons. That's an old term, old firefighting term that we still use today. But firefighters are always carrying our irons. And they're gonna carry an ax and a halligan. These are two tools that we use. Every firefighter is trained on how to use these tools properly. You would think, well, what, what is there for training and how to use an ax? Believe it or not, there is a special way to deal with this. this is a, these two pieces are strapped together so that we can carry them. So obviously we have our ax. We can chop with it. Uh, we can hit with it as a hammer. We've got a lot of things we can do. It has a special weight and a special shape to it, especially geared for firefighting. So that's one of our tools. The other one of our tools is called a halligan. This one's got a really unique uh, tool, different points. So we got a point here that we can use to pry open a door. We also have another flat blade here to pry open a door, depending on our circumstance. Then we got what's called the jaw. We can pound that in and we can pry with that. You know, it looks like a big crowbar. Pretty much that's what it is. Every one of these points we can actually use the ax to pound in to help get us in. So when we have to get into whatever building we need to, whether it's a house, a business, and what we use called forcible entry, these are the tools that we are going to use to get inside. So these are what are called our tools. And they can be kind of heavy, but each firefighter, when they get off the truck, they're going to be wearing or they're going to be carrying those tools. Next compartment. So everybody might ask what these tubes are for. These trucks runs off of diesel fuel or gasoline. These, when we turn on the trucks, a vacuum turns on and it sucks all the smoke and exhaust from these vehicles out. So it's for our safety. I said, I'm going to take it off. You'll probably hear it turn on. Maybe you won't hear it turn on. There, I got it to turn on. Right now, it's actually sucking the air out so it'll turn off very shortly here's another compartment that we have we have containers so if oil gets spilled from car crashes or for whatever reason uh, we can absorb the oil we also have it where if we can fight specific fires like chimney fires or we have toolboxes in here so we have all kinds of things 
on this side to deal with might be some type of hazardous liquid or hazardous material. So we'll leave that one open and I'm going to hook this back up. It's just held on by magnets. That's all that is. So with engine one, it's a little bit different than engine two, but these are our fire hoses. These two fire hoses are our main attack hoses. And we can pull these from either side. So our firefighters ride up here in the cab area. And when we get to the scene and we have a fire that we have to fight, we're going to pull one of these hoses and they're actually going to come out like a backstrap and I'm not going to pull them all out. But I would grab a hold of the nozzle, I would put this on, put this on and pull. We're going to have 150 feet come, of hose come out then so we can go inside of a home or business to help extinguish a fire. So that's just how we have this set up at that point. I'll just let them lay right here. We will put them away afterwards. We have another set up here, exactly the same with these, but they're color coded. When we get on the other side of this truck, I'm going to show you the pump panel. They're color coded as which lever we pull. So they'll say, give me water in the yellow line. We're going to open up that yellow line. So we will show that. These different nozzles or these different pipes sticking out had different purposes. These two are what are called discharge. So that means the water that's in the tank going into the pump can come out these hoses. So we can hook up hoses and we actually have more hose in the back of this truck. These are already connected, but we can hook up more hoses to these. But if we're within the village here, we have fire hydrants out there. We then can use very large hose and we can hook that up to the fire hydrant and then we would hook that up to this pipe coming in. So the water is going to come in this pipe, go through a pump that makes the pressure get higher. At which time the water comes out that we can go fight the fire. So yes, we have to get the water in, the water comes out, but we actually get the pressure up. So when you open up your kitchen faucet or your bathroom sink, water comes out, it's under pressure. The same pressure and the same water that's going to go into this truck. Same system. It's just that that pressure is not enough to fight a fire. So that's why we have the engines here to push that water to our location. So, and we have different other valves and different gates and some things we, um, you have to get certified in how to use this truck. It's called a pump operator. This is a certification. So I currently have that. We have many firefighters here that have that certification. So we know all the ins and outs and all the special needs that this truck has and how to safely operate it. So, so these doors are open up and then the stairway flips down. So in here is where the firefighters are riding. We currently have four seats. We have five total, but we're only going to use four seats at this point while we're en route to a fire. Every fire truck should have at least four people on it. So each seat has an air pack on it and we'll have a firefighter uh, show how to don their gear, what we call when they put their coat on and the air pack on. It's called, the term is called donning their gear. We will have that. We will show that. Um, it is a process. So this is where they sit when they're on their way to the call. Up there you can see headphones and microphones. We all put those on us like airplane pilots so we can talk without yelling over the engine noise. Because believe it or not, the engine's right underneath here. So it can get kind of loud. That way we use that to talk and then as we're going to a fire, the person that sits in this seat is an officer not a police officer. They are our brothers in law enforcement. This officer is a fire officer. And that fire officer then is going to tell firefighters 
what they need to do, what tools they're going to need to grab, what hose they need to grab, what are they going to do? Are they going to fight the fire? Are they going to go help deal with somebody who's injured? All kinds of different things. They figure that out while they're going en route. So that is where they are going to ride. I'll open up this door. Same doors go out. Not all trucks have the steps that pop down, but that's, this one does. So here's where the officer sits, and he has a computer in front of him. It's a fancy term for that computer. It's called a mobile data center or mobile data terminal, otherwise, too. That basically, what you see up there are actually calls that are going on right now within the county. So if when we're going to a call, we're actually going to see that pop up on our screen and we're going to get all the details that we need going and call with the incident we are. And this officer there, he's the one who talks to our 911 dispatchers and he's the one who then tells his crew what they're going to do. He might even tell crew, other crews what they need to do while they're en route. So that is the officer's position. We'll come around the front of the truck. This truck has a unique feature that not a lot of trucks have, but we have a few of them here. Years ago, they never had sirens. They had bells. So back in the days when horses pulled these type of machines for pumping water, there were no sirens, there was no electricity in them. Horses drew all that. So that's what they would do is they would pull on the bell and they would ring the bell. The bell also signifies if there's a call. In the old days, a ringing of a bell a certain way told volunteers of a community that there is a fire call, report to the station. So that's what the bell is for and used for. This is, this is a siren right here, and it's very loud. I'm not gonna turn that on because that will definitely um, we don't want to hurt anybody's eardrums or anything, but it's very loud. And that's basically telling people, especially in cars, we're coming, would you please pull over so we can proceed through. As we come around the other side of engine one, I'll open up this last door here. And this is the driver's spot. This is where the engine operator comes in. This is also where training is involved and how he operates. So the, all those switch and dials and TV, that operator needs to know how each one of those works. There's a lever in here that we switch that actually turns the pump on so that we can pump water. So when it's driving down the road, that pump is not going. We actually have to turn the pump on to do that. And you see there's, there's those airplane headphones and microphones so that way we can talk to everybody again. Uh, there's siren control up here. There's other horn controls as well up here. This is the other side of that compartment where we had individuals sitting for fire calls. You'll see a red bag in here. That's actually an emergency medical bag in case somebody gets hurt either on the fire scene or maybe we're gonna to go to a scene because both ambulances are out. So then we're gonna go in this truck to help those people. So that's what's in there then. So here's the other side of those hose loops that I was talking about. So we can pull, same way, they've got the big loops right here. We can put on our shoulders and give it a pull. Again, here are the different, just like the other side, different pipes coming out and a pipe coming in for operating the pump. It's hard to see from down here. We will show it in engine two, but there's a pump panel up here. That's where this pump operator is going to operate this truck from. And he's gonna pull levers. We're actually gonna go on engine two and we can do that from the ground level, uh, showing that as well. In this compartment, extra pipe fittings, because we might have to change size of a hose for multiple different reasons. Maybe we go help somebody else out our neighboring fire department's out, and then we might have to use connections to hook up to their system. So that's where that is. These are three sets of hoses. So if you live in an apartment building or a tall building, we don't have enough hose on our trucks to get there so we can put the fire out. 
What we have is what's called apartment packs. So if you go through a stairwell in an apartment and you see this pipe in that stairwell, that is for us. That term is for that pipe is called a stand pipe. So we go hook up to a pipe sticking out of the building. We hook a hose up to the truck and that then pumps water up into the building through a pipe and it comes out another spot where then we would hook these hoses up. These hoses are long. We could carry, we'd have to carry them and we could, you know, we figure out where we got to be to fight the fire. All right. And here's the last compartment. So we have what's called the Indian packs. So if there's a grass fire or a fire out in the woods, we then use these two to get to the fire and put the fire out. We have chainsaws in here so that way we can go cut wood if we have to, to get the fire out. We can also use this chainsaw to get access into a building as well. And we have other things. Here's another fan that we use for air. So we have all these features with this. So this is engine one. That's kind of a tour with engine one. We have electrical cords in here because there's an electric generator on this truck. So if there's a fire there, we disconnect the, the electricity and now we have, we supply our own electricity. So come on over to engine two and I'm gonna show you something else. For this one, here's the hose compartment. So we actually have it inside of a compartment here where those are out in the open. But in this one, in engine two, this is what's called the pump panel. So in engine one, where that individual has to stand up there that I was showing, in this truck, we can stand right here and do all this. There's a lot of stuff going on here that as a pump operator, we're trained in how to look for and how to use. For the person like you and I, or like you and other people, this, this can be really confusing. So when we talked about the yellow line and the blue line, so there's a yellow dial and a blue dial. We have the same thing. We have the, the blue ones up there and the yellow. So if I'm told to turn on the water to the yellow line, I can then, the truck is off, so we're not gonna worry about it. I can now pull this lever down and the water is gonna go into that yellow line. Same thing for the blue line or whatever, there's a green one. Each one is labeled so that we can put water in the specific one when we're told. Because they can be working off the other side of the truck and we're not gonna see them. But we do talk to them. We have a microphone here with a radio that we can talk to them on. We also have our headsets up there that we have. We can plug them in as well in here and use that as well. So this is the pump panel. This is the main operation center of this truck for fighting fire. That truck, that pump panel is up on top where you have to stand between the cab and the truck itself. So each truck is different in a di unique ways. Um, we have more fittings, what's called fittings. So we have all kinds of things like that one department, you know, change different size of hoses. So we have all that. So everything in this truck, pretty much the same as that truck, maybe a little bit different compartment. Uh, we're all learned and we know where all the equipment is in each truck. Uh, that's why we train. Somebody said, what do we do? We, we train, we call it training. It's otherwise known as we practice. If you practice, you're in sports. You don't get good at doing your sport unless you practice. Same thing with firefighter. We don't have a lot of calls, which is good. We don't want a lot of fire calls. Um, but when fire does break out, and it does, we have to be ready and know how to operate at this. So that is reason why we practice several times a month. So that's pretty much for engine two. You might have seen that we have a boat. Yes, we have a boat for our water rescues because of the two lakes that we have. We also have another pickup truck that's called a brush truck. That is a four wheel drive truck that can go out into the woods or out into a field to put out a fire. In the trailer, there's uh, a ATV type vehicle that we can also get off-road traveling. 
And those can be used for rescue as well. So it isn't necessarily fight a fire. It's in case somebody is hurt out in the, out in the field or out in the woods. We are getting into the fall of the year where hunting is going on. And we've had people get hurt out in the woods where now they can no longer get out themselves and we have to go rescue them. So that's what those two are. Right here is a squad. Squad is a special vehicle that we can haul five extra people in here. There's no water on this truck. There's no hoses on this truck. This truck has an assortment of special equipment on it. Normally they call it a heavy rescue. So when we have a car crash, even though these other trucks have some equipment that can help get people out of a car or out of a trapped environment, this is the truck that we have all the heavy duty equipment that we would use. So we have all of our tools in here. Um, they are held in. And yes, they are heavy. They're held in like clips. Like for the, just. I'm gonna take this one out. I'm gonna just hold it and I'll show you what it is. It's what's called a scissors. It's a cutting tool. And it, yes, it is heavy and we do know how to operate it. We're practicing on it. But that is what we would use to get people out of cars or out of a trapped environment if we have to. If we had a locked door and there was a fire in there, like a padlock on it, we might even use one of these pieces of tools to get inside that too. So we, it isn't just for car crashes that we would use this tool for. There we go. I'm gonna put this back right away because we wanna make sure that our equipment is always ready to go. We don't wanna leave stuff laying around. We don't want stuff not anchored in. Um, I know I gotta fix the hoses from the other truck yet. Come on. There, it's in that special place. So that's all that in there. We have hoses in here. We have. These are like big balloons, and of course they're in there tight enough where I can't get them out. So, so that's the extrication. So that's what this truck does. A lot of heavy duty rescue type things. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna shut this one up and we'll come around to our last truck that we have. Our last truck that we have, it's called a tender. People sometimes might call it a tanker truck. Uh, for in the fire department terms around here, something that shuttles water is called a tender. We call it a tender operation, meaning we're tendering water. So this has a big tube on it that we can back up. We've got big square canvas tanks that fold up. They're actually, we have two of them. There's one in here and there's one over here, the same type of compartment. This tube then can swing around. We can swing this tube around. We can back up to that tank of water. And this tube has a, like a kitchen sink valve. It opens up and all that water rushes out and fills the tank up. This truck can haul about 1,500 gallons of water, 1,500 gallons of water. So that's what this is. But this truck also has a pump on it. Not as big a pump as the engines does, but it does have a pump on it. So we have other ways to get the water into a holding tank. So only there's not a lot of firefighters that go in this truck. There's only two that go on this truck and they're up front, the driver and officer. So that's kind of what our fire department looks like. There's a lot of equipment here. Each one has got its own special need and use. And sometimes we use them all in a scene. Sometimes we only use one. Maybe just a simple pickup that, hey, we just need more people. We have to help this individual and lift up this individual. And we just need more help. So all we're going to do is come out in a vehicle like a pickup truck. We go and we help that person. And once we're done, they come home. I have a friend of mine, actually he's uh, one of our captains, Captain Harlan Hetrick. Been on the department, longtime member here. 
Uh, and he'd be one, when I'm talking about an officer that sits up in that officer seat, Harlan is one of those gentlemen that does that and would actually give out orders and assignments to his crew as they're coming. So I can also fill that role. He can also fill that role as an operator. So in the fire service, we have multiple roles that we do have to fill in order to, to meet the demands of what uh, the community needs. But what I'm gonna show you here, there's a lot of stuff right here that everybody's... So firefighters have all this equipment we have to wear. And it's special equipment. People might think, oh, that's big heavy coat, big heavy pants, like snow pants and snowsuit. We wear it because we're cold. And actually the problem, the reason why we wear that is to protect us from the heat Yes, it does protect us from cold out in the bitter cold in the wintertime, but when we're going into a home or into a room where fire is going on, that room can be anywhere from 300 degrees up to 1,000 degrees. And we need this protection of ourselves so we don't get injured, so we can either extinguish the fire, we can do a search and rescue and get trapped people out if needed, multiple reasons why. The other thing that we're gonna put on is the our air tank we call that an scba that's a it's a term that we called self-contained breathing apparatus and there's multiple different types out there we choose this brand here that suits our needs at the fire department so i asked captain hetrick here to to put on some of his gear as you can see we have gear on the lock on the lock, lockers and the walls so these people come to the station if we have a fire call. So if the pager were to go off right now, it'd go off for two things. Either we, somebody needs help, either they're sick or injured, or we have a fire call that would go out. If it's a fire call, firefighters are gonna come running to the station. Those fire departments where people stay at the station, what some do here at times, they would come out from their dorms or their bedrooms and they come out and they put their gear on. So Harlan's gonna come out and the first thing he's gonna do when he comes in, he's gonna get rid of his shoes and he's gonna get rid of his glasses. And we'll talk about the glasses in a little bit. Go right ahead, I'll explain through. So one of the things he's gonna put on, the first thing he's gonna put on are his boots. These are slip-on boots that are rubber or leather, but they are waterproof and they also protect from the fire. Then Harlan puts his pants on. They call the pants bunker pants. They have pockets on them to carry equipment or gloves or multiple other things that we feel we might need to help us do our job. It has a special uh, striking tool, sometimes it's flashlights. So, but you'll notice it's got pads on here when we're on our hands and knees. And we'll explain a little bit as time goes on. Then he has a special hood. This special hood is a fireproof hood. There again, we have to make sure that we protect ourselves from the heat and the flames of the fire. So it is gonna cover everything. Our goal is to make sure that we have no skin being exposed. So now Harlan's gonna put on his big heavy coat. He puts on his heavy coat that has multiple layers on, has a lot of clips, it has Velcro on it. It has multiple different things to make sure that we are protected from fire. And yes, we have to clip all those little things, the clips, the snaps, and we can keep the Velcro to keep everything sealed. I might help Harland out even as we do, because we do that in the fire service too. If, we're not, if we don't see something right for our partners, we're gonna help them out too. So the next thing Harlan's probably gonna put on He's going to make sure he's going to make sure everything's good. He's going to put on his mask. So the self-contained breathing atomer, that's so the SCBA has a special valve on it. But we have to still be able to breathe that air and see. So he's going to put a special mask on. Now, if you notice in his, gla in his mask, he has glasses. For those firefighters that have glasses like Harlan or myself, We've got that added extra clip in there so that way we can still see what we're doing. So if we had a read on evacuation plan, we can actually see that then. So now he's gonna put it on and he's gonna cinch everything up so it's tight. 
We want this to be an airtight seal around our entire face. And he's gonna make sure when he sucks in like that, there's no leaking going on. We're going in to a hazardous air environment. There's limited oxygen in there, first of all, but there's enough to keep the fire going. But more importantly, there's other toxins within that fire area that we do not want to breathe. And heat as well. So now that hood that he put on, he's going to pull that over and he's going to make sure that all the skin is covered up. And I'm just going to check because it's tough for him to see. There, I might cover that last little bit. We help our friends, our, our fellow firefighters out. Then he's going to put another collar around to seal that off. So is this still Harland? It's still Harland, right? Nothing's really changed. He just looks differently. He's just put on a big coat, and he's put on the big boots and the big glasses. Now he's got this special face mask on, and now he's going to put on his helmet. Helmet is a hard hat type helmet. Uh, it is, you know, everybody knows what a firefighter helmet looks like. Uh, it's on there a special way. He puts the ear flaps down, and yes, it does keep your ears warm in the, in the winter time, but it also protects us, again, from the heat from the fire. And we make sure that it's secured on. So Harlan is basically, the only thing, he's got a few other things to put on. He's making sure everything's tight so that way we have safety-wise. You see on his helmet, he has a flashlight, but it is hard. And yes, it is shaped to help deflect water. This also helps the back end, also helps protect us from any falling uh, items within the fire. So now Harlan's gonna do, still Harlan, right? Still Harlan, right? So now he's gonna put on the last thing and I might help him a little bit with this because this is big. Remember in those seats in the engines? There were those seats that had those air tanks in those brackets. This is one of those air tanks. So he's going to put this up like your backpack, and he's going to try to make sure that everything's tight. And there we go. There we go. And like I said, we always help to make sure that everything's tight. Because his safety relies on me, my safety relies on him. So now he's getting his gloves on. He puts his gloves on. This is still Harlan, right? Nothing's really changed. It's still Harlan. And now his gloves on. And if we look onto him, we literally have every piece of skin covered up. So nobody's going to get burned. And that's our main goal. Because now we have to be able to go in and either fight the fire or rescue somebody. So I'm going to have Arlen actually put on his mask. There's a valve I'm going to open up for him. And now you're going to hear all kinds of noises and beeps. This tank is now open. And he's going to put this on. He's actually going to put on what's called a voice amp. Hello, hello, hello. He does like to sing. He is our singing firefighter. That alarm right there, he hasn't moved. He hasn't moved, and that's a safety feature, and we'll explain that. All right? Is this still Harlan? Yep. He looks a lot different now, doesn't he? So we can, and go ahead and talk to me, Harlan. Is it me? Is it not? So we have radios if we're going to go fight a fire. And he would be able to talk on that radio. Yes, I would. Right through Yep. But right now, he could go into an environment with little oxygen or with high air toxins and still be safe. You can hear me. Sounds like Darth Vader. This is where they got some of the sound effects for Star Wars. That alarm you hear right there, it is loud. There's one more torn that's going to go off. There we go. Go ahead and move around now. It is loud. Yeah, you might have to. 
There's a special button on there. There we go. We can clear that out. That alarm is if the firefighter is hurt, injured, cannot respond or cannot move for any reason, that is gonna tell everybody else within his vicinity and most likely outside that we have a firefighter that is down and needs help. So that is the reason why they go off. So you'll see firefighters moving constantly. If they're not, they're waiting outside, waiting to go in to help. They're actually moving around because it senses that movement. Harlan can actually see in his masks how much air he has in his tank. There's special things. He has a dial right here he can see how much is in there. So, and he can even turn this off by this little switch right there. He is totally breathing on this air. The other thing we have a special hookup on here and what's called a rapid intervention team. So if he is down and he's hurt, we have a team of special firefighters that have been trained to go in to rescue firefighters like Harlan in this circumstance. And they're training how to do that. So is this still Harlan? Making all kinds of noises, but it is still Harlan. Yep. So now that Harlan is fully set up to go in those dangerous environments, remember we talked about the tools that we had off engine one? Well, Harlan has one of those tools. He gets off the truck, he has the air tank on, he's ready to go in. He has a tool in his hand. So he has tools if he needs them while he enters into the building or wherever it is that they're working on. So then what we do when we get inside, what do we know about smoke? It's lighter than air, right? That's up here. So do we want to be walking around up there? No. Neither do firefighters. We want to get down in the lower part and we're going to get down to our knees and we're going to actually be in the good air, number one, and number two, we're going to be able where we can see. So Harlan's going to get on his knees now where we always do. Remember we got the knee pads? And he's actually going to uh, simulate a search and rescue type thing inside of a room. So he has, the, he has the tool in his hand, and we bang on the, on the floor to make sure that the floor is there, number one. And number two, to make sure that that floor will hold us. You notice he's laying down too. That's help distributing his weight versus us walking on our feet. So this is what we do is we sound the floor. We then will reach out for our hand and we always try to find a wall. We find a wall because right now we can't see. There's so much smoke in this building we can't see where we're at. So we're doing this and we're trying to find people that might be injured or hurt. We might have other crews coming in with actual fire hose. You notice Harlan does not have a fire hose right now. Harlan's assignment is search and rescue. We have other people coming in where their assignment is going to be fire attack or to come in and assist them. So now we just found another door. So he found the outside and now we just found another door. And he can, and he can tell by the way that sounds, it's probably a garage door because the way it's rattling and sound. So that's the way our firefighters do search and rescue. So I'm gonna have Harlan, he can get up now and making sure he can get up. All right. Thank you Harlan for that. We appreciate it. And uh, one thing when we're doing the search and rescue, when you hear him calling out, and you're hiding, we want you to come out. We want you to come to him so he can get you out. If you're a little kid, don't be scared by all these noises. We want you to come out, come to our firefighters. We're here to help you. All right. Thank you very much, sir. So that kind of concludes our tour of the fire department. We would love to have you come in and tour us sometime when things finally do settle down.
We always welcome our community and for visitors to come and visit us. Check out our website and our Facebook page where you will see a lot of photos of events that we do for both for the public. Um, we normally would have an open house that we are not gonna be able to do this year because of our um, pandemic issues going on right now. But in the future, we will have them and we will post that. Thank you very much for taking time. We will be posting this link uh, for this video, uh, for others to share as well that they want to look at. So thank you very much.